get ready for the overload. Everything all at once, it's literally like a fire hose. This isn't something that you can just learn overnight. I've never had to study for anything more in my life than for this job. Stay in the books, stay motivated, organize your life to make, make your training a priority. Prepare yourself. We want people to come to us wanting to do this job. This is a job that is demanding. It takes a lot of effort to get through the schools. It takes a lot of effort to be one once you've graduated and gone operational. So we want the right people in the right positions um, so that they can flourish and thrive in that environment. When I got this job, I didn't really know what it was. Uh, there wasn't a lot of advertisement for it. Um, and then somehow I landed it figured out what it was and then I was like, oh wow, this is pretty cool. And then I got to the training, I was like, yeah, it's cool, but oh wow, this is a lot. This job specifically, you kind of have to have strong willpower, I suppose, because a lot of it is gonna be taxing and a lot of it's gonna make you feel like you can't do it because it's a big rush of information all at once. But the idea of that is you kind of learn how to like calm down a bit, think about what you're doing, and then properly execute whatever you need to do. On H models, I was just a gunner. All that I was concerned with was my guns. And then going to the U model, you, you were concerned with the guns, but you were also kind of a load master. And then I feel like now on the J's, it's guns and then load master duties, and then even like a bit of like flight engineer stuff, so. You have to know a lot more, but you're always like engaged with the plane. You know what's going on. You're always busy. You don't have time for a nap. Our standard right now is the gold standard, and that's being brilliant at the basics. So physically it is demanding, but definitely mentally it's been tough. Yeah, I would say that's like the worst part. Stay active. Job takes a toll on your body, and uh, you need to not only mentally prepare yourself for it, but physically prepare yourself too. The reward is the opportunity to go to the operational unit and uh, protect and defend the Constitution. It's what everybody does when they raise the right hand to enlist in the Air Force or any service but there's some longer training involved. So the reward is, you know, getting that opportunity um, to go down range, to protect the friendly forces on the ground, and to make a difference. You, as a special mission aviator, make a difference on the battlefield. You change the landscape of that environment. Blatantly, a lot of people just aren't comfortable with the, with the fact that what we do as a gunship. Like, we put bad guys down to save good guys. Okay, so a lot of the problem is they're not okay with putting the bad guys down. At the end of the day, that's what you're doing. There's ground guys there, and just like you wanna go and see your families, they wanna do the exact same thing, you know what I mean? So, and I mean, and they're, they're pretty much face front with whatever like enemies in their face, and you wanna protect them. So if you're unsure mentally because of how you feel with personal issues or, or whatever, reframe it that way, and then it makes sense because now you're not just taking out the bad guy, now you're saving the good guy. Don't quit. Because a lot of people, um, I notice like when they get here, they realize how difficult it is and uh, they, they didn't think it would be like that. And then they just uh, pretty much quit on themselves um, without even realizing it. And you know, they're missing out on a pretty cool job. Since this is my third gunship, I know how awesome it is when you deploy and when you get through training and you can, you know, be ready and be on alert and deploy and it's the best. Everything is worth it and that's what I keep telling myself. Um, even like going through like the first time as a student, just talking to people that had already checked out and had already deployed, they're like, it's so worth it and it definitely is.
through my years of training, through my years of combat, being in a certain amphitheater or tribes, if you may, um, it creates a camaraderie. And um, I haven't just done a job. It's been a way of life. So I've uh, met a lot of great people, worked with a lot of great people, and you still stay in contact. Those are lifelong friends. Those are lifelong brothers and sisters in arms. Um, and to me, that's amazing. And there's a lot of AFSCs out there that have similar tribes like that where, you know, it, it, it's a lifelong connection. To me, I'm always fighting, fighting for our airmen, fighting for something better for everyone. And, and I, I try to create a culture and environment where people fight to get in the organizations that we're leading um, and fighting to stay. So I think it's important, you, you gotta have some grit. You gotta challenge yourself and want to do something because nothing comes easy that's not a great reward. You've gotta work hard. You get knocked down, you get back up. You have a rough patch, you learn from it. We and air crew talk about having thick skin. And I agree with that. You know, you need to have some thick skin and a short memory, you know, because that was yesterday and tomorrow's a whole new day.